Hi, this is Gloria, your life coach. Welcome to another episode of Life's a Shuffle. Hi, this is Ron Johnson, life coach, leadership coach, motivation speaker, and health coach. And welcome to another episode of Life's the Shuffle. So, so today, of course, Freestyle Thursday, no topic. Let's catch up for the week because it's been a long, stressful, at least for me, almost two weeks. Um, as far as you know, those that know, I'm leaving. And when you try to leave, you got a lot of things to go on to move. And trying to still work a full-time business means I'm working like seven days a week now to finish clients' personal training sessions. Before I'm gone, because I'm gone, I can't do in-person training. Um, so fortunately, me, a few of us are, a few of them are following virtually. So I'll be able to actually train with them still ongoing while I go to Washington. In addition to that, just uh, wrapping up just a week, just trying to get things done. Um, you know what? We go through stress, which has been the last three weeks for me. I don't know about everybody else, but... I go to bed about 9, 9.30 at the latest. I wake up at 11.50 p.m. or 11-ish around there every night. Then by default, 2 p.m., boom, I'm up. Don't know why. Don't know what's happening. Alarm doesn't go off to 4 a.m. And uh, I think I said 3 p.m. I meant 3 a.m. Alarm doesn't go off to 4 a.m. So I'm like, oh, my goodness, what's going on? And it's just not getting enough sleep. And I can see it's taking a toll of my body and not physically, but sorry, not mentally, but physically, I see the big difference in my body. And that's where it's like become very stressful and frustrating. What about you, Gloria? Um, Actually, speaking of that, I've been feeling the same way. I don't know how long you've been feeling that. I think for me, it's within the last couple of weeks. I would say the last probably two weeks I've been having, um, I've been that has been happening to me and talking to my friends, <clears throat> the other girls about it, it's been happening to them too, which is pretty weird. I know like I, I don't sleep as um, around the same time as you usually a little later. Um, what I do is when I do, it's almost like a quick nap for me. So I actually go to bed, close my eyes, I fall asleep and then I'm up like within 30 minutes. And then I try to put myself back to sleep. So then I'm sleeping and then I wake up again a couple of hours later and I'm just trying to put myself back to sleep. So that whole time I was trying to sleep maybe at least six hours, right? I, I try to get at least six hours of sleep that within that six hours, I'm it's like on and off for me. And it's not a complete six hours. And I know there's one night, which is really weird. I woke up like at two o'clock in the morning, I think. And then um, I remember trying to put myself back to sleep and it almost, it took me almost about an hour just to go back to sleep. All I did was stare at the ceiling and I felt like I was staring at the ceiling counting sheep. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what was going on in my mind, but I know I was frustrated at myself because I just wanted to sleep, like just go back to sleep and I couldn't. And then I go back to sleep, then I'm up an hour before the alarm, my alarm goes off. Wow. Crazy. Yeah. It's been wonder, crazy. What, so what's going on with you? Why are you not sleeping? I don't know. I honestly don't know. I, I feel like sometimes our body is just kind of weird that way. Um, maybe there is something going on. I just really can't point my fingers to it yet. Maybe there is a lot of things going on with me. Um, a lot of things in my mind. I just, just can't point my fingers to it or it's just the way the body goes. Uh, one of my girlfriends actually told me that for her, it's, it, she's <laughs> blaming it on the hormones. <laughs> so That's by default, right? <laughs> so it's just, you know, you'd hear it too. It's like, Oh, my, my, my hormones is acting up again. Here it goes again. I can't sleep. I lack sleep. Um, so I, I don't, no, I was confused for a while because I'm thinking, what if is that? What if, if my body is going through changes again? Um, or what if I'm just, you know, stress? Mm -hmm. And yeah, it's, it's just, it's just weird. Our body is just really weird in that way. And I know I've caught myself... I don't know if you felt this way where sometimes during the day you're you're either walking around or you're trying to work, but you feel like a zombie. Lack of sleep. That's how I felt on Tuesday. Lack of sleep. 
Um, I was definitely sleep deprived. That was probably the worst I've had in a very long time. I was just, I felt like any instant I was fall on the ground, hit my face. Um, even being with clients, cause you know, with clients, you have to get 100%. You can't show up. You can't show up 100% to client at 6 AM and get the client at 6 PM, 50%. It doesn't work that way. So I'm 100% all the time, but I don't like that enthusiasm energy that I usually have because I was just so, so exhausted. And, um, you know, working these seven days a week, I think for me, it becomes first is, um, I hate to say no, right? Meaning that I want to get client sessions done before I leave. And I hate not to say no, so I try. But back in my mind, it's like, oh, I shouldn't do that, but I do it anyways, just because you're trying to please people. And that, that's what all of us do, usually do is that no one we should always say no or set a boundary. So it's it's kind of ironic. So when Tuesday, I was going through this stuff, you know, it's funny how the way the universe works. Uh, me and Michelle, right? So she was a special guest and she's also for a podcast. She posted about setting boundaries. Mm -hmm. I said, dang, you know what? Going for, I'm going to start setting boundaries. Just say no. I can't do it. Mm -hmm. And that right there, actually by her talking about that and in and, and her post, I was like, you know what? That's what the issue is. That's why I get frustrated because I say yes, not setting a boundary and say, no, I cannot do that. Because the fear is if I say no, I'll disappoint people or disappoint my, my clients. And I don't want to do that because this is a business and it's a reflection of myself. But inherently, if I don't show up 100%, they're not getting a full Ron Johnson. So that tells me right then and there that I need to set some boundaries. This is the time I work, this is the time I don't work, and you will try to do the best we can, but you set a boundary instead of overworking yourself. Because mm -hmm. if you overwork yourself, you become more frustrated over, about overworking yourself because you don't want to do Because I do need some time myself. And you know, as I'm getting ready to leave, you know, you, you got to pack a, a condo and pack everything up. And, and it, it's like a lot of stuff, not a lot of stuff, but it's, you got a lot of moving parts. I'm still walking full time. Um, so this is, it get tired of just, you know, trying to just work, work, work. I don't want to be workaholic. And at the same time, I'm trying to start my, my life coaching business. And uh, I think I told you about this. I'm launching virtual seminars. Now with still with COVID and shelter in place, a lot of people working remotely, um, big gatherings are still kind of banned right now. So I'm doing virtual seminars. So, you know, for those that want to feel better and be better and that are lacking, are stuck where they are, who they are in life, I can be able to do a virtual seminar. So, you know, as I really want to get life coaching, mentor coaching going, um, you know, personal training is great, but I need to set some boundaries so I can work on my business. So that's the point for you guys out there. If you were trying to do something and it becomes very frustrated because you can't do it, just like what's happening to me right now. I had to go back and read about what, what's happening, okay? Because I'm only one person. I can only work a certain amount of day, days a week. I can only do a certain amount of hours a day. I can only work on everything else. If I'm trying to, if you're trying to try, try if you're trying to get a business or get something started, you got to look at how much time you're spending on it. So I looked at this. I reviewed my time. I'm not really spending much time on my, my mentor business. So I, how do I expect that to grow? It's not going to grow. I'm not working on it. It's like no difference than I, I talked about this in one podcast, The Law of the Farmer, right? Mm -hmm. And reaping the harvest. So the thing is about a farmer, he has to do a process. He knows that, let's say, I don't give you an example. I'm not a farmer, but January, I got to plant the, you know, the pumpkin seeds because in October, I to make sure they're ready to go, right? So he plants the pumpkin seeds in January, tills it, uh, waters it, you know, gives it the fertilizer and soil and all that stuff. So in October, you can have it. So the point is, if you don't try to work in your farm to harvest the right crop, it will not be ready. So the farmer waits until, oh, I'm going to wait until February, April, May, I'll plant my pumpkin seeds, it may not be ready by October as the deadline is. So I, you got to work in your step in order to have what you want. Probably a mouthful there, but the point is you got to make time for things you want. If you don't make time for things you want, you will never receive it or never get it. That's true. And I do like that about setting boundaries because I, for one, um, <clears throat> I, I think, you know, we've heard of that saying, um, listen to your body, Right. So when you start feeling something and you know what to do, I'm one of those people sometimes that doesn't listen to my body. I'm, I'm stubborn like that um, because I always tell myself, well, I like what I'm doing. But, you know, at the end of the day, I start to feel it when I'm home and I'm relaxed. Oh, my God. As soon as I sit down, I just I just feel it in my body. My body's just like I, I'm I'm done. And I think this last few weeks, the only thing that keeps me going and what's helping me is coffee, <laughs> caffeine. 
I mean, I'm going to say it's an addiction. Yes, because now my body's looking for it when I start to feel down or I start to feel something like, oh, I need coffee. I need my drink because I can't function without my drink. So I, I get the high and then I go down. So it proves there's a placebo effect. You know, first, maybe first 10 to 15 times of doing it, it's okay. But as time moves along, that placebo is wearing off. So you need more and more coffee. Right, exactly. <laughs> but, you know, I'm not like a big coffee drinker anyways. Like a, like a cup, let's say like the ones from Starbucks. If I get grande, that size, is, that's like medium, right? That can last me all day. I just sip it throughout the day. So it's not like I'm having like several cups a day. Interesting. So my body like has, you know, the coffee has that kind of effect on my body, but I like the strong ones. So I have not really had it just lately. I've just tried the double shot. Oh boy. That really like, it has that kick, but then it also, you feel like a crash later on. And, you know, I've also realized like, like you, that I have so many things I feel like I'm juggling everywhere, left and right. So setting boundaries when you were speaking about that. <clears throat> I did um, last week was I, what I did one time is I sat down and I looked at my, you know, what's going on with me? Why am I feeling this way? I, which one do I really want to focus on more first? Because I feel like I want to do everything all at once. And, it's, and, and then I start to juggle. So which one is more important for me? And that's when I actually took that, you know, I, I took a little step back on that. And now it's just, you know, taking things one at a time and then if, and finding the time for it. So that way I'm not like I'm juggling all over the place or I'm trying to make time for, you know, there's, let, let's say the life coaching stuff. I have to try to make time for that too, because right now I'm swamped with school. Mm -hmm. I'm swamped with school and then with volleyball. So I had to make some choices, which was just last week. I had to cut down on volleyball to focus more on, you know, my actual job, which is a school. And then at the same time, I need to focus on life coaching too. And then there are things that I'm working on and I do have a project that I'm working on that obviously I want it, I want it done. And how am I going to get that done? If I'm not doing anything and I'm just right. staring at it and it's all in my head and all in my thoughts, right? It'll never get, go anywhere. Right, exactly. And that's the, so, the fundamental thing I, I have done for so many years is not really getting out there and, and setting my boundaries, saying yes, yes, yes. And, you know, what, what's kind of, I guess, the great benefit that I have um, is that I've started two businesses for those that don't know that. So um, help, personal training is one of them. And second one is life coaching. But what I've noticed is that if I repeat the same behaviors I did in my first business, my second business will have the same result, right? So I'm able to use my first business as a springboard to say, okay, this is what I'm going to accept. And this is what I'm not going to accept for my second company. That makes a big difference there. Yeah. So you have the, ex you have experience, you kind of have the expectations, right? Um, <clears throat> you have an idea of what to do and how to run it. Whereas there's people like us who's just starting. And, and this is totally different from what I was doing again before. You know what I mean? Um, it's, it, it's hard when you, I think, and I did talk about this with our other co-coach, um, Amy, that when you're, when you have a full-time job and you're trying to start something that you feel like you're more in a line with, it, it, it's hard, but you have to make a choice. You have to make some choices. You, you have your full-time job, yes, because you feel like, do you need it? You're making money. Whereas the other one, you're still, you're starting it. But are you unsure if you're going to be able to do it or not? Are you going to make it happen or not? You know, and you're not making any money off of it right now. It's the true thing is that <clears throat> you have to give up something to get something in return. I mean, so if I'm sitting there trying to, let's say, you know, start a new business and, but if you don't put in the time to start a new business, it won't work, period. That's what most of us don't understand. You got to put in the work. Yeah, it's going to cost some money. Yeah, it's going to cost some time. But 
look at this. You're doing this for long term, not short term. So if you go into mm-hmm. short term, of course, you're gonna, this is going to come up. And, and of course, you're not making any money off it. Of course, that's all going to happen. But the work really is in the process. The evolution change really is learning how to do it and the work you put into it because it will benefit. It may not be instantly right now, but it will happen. You got to put the work in. And that's kind of, that's anything in life. You have to wor- put work into a lot of things in life to live life. And, you know, sometimes I always say, recently, I think I've said this, where you have to sacrifice one thing to have the other. I've told, I've told that to a friend recently who um, is in a situation and eventually would have to make a big or, you know, a, a decision and she she's just she's stuck and i i I, you know when that just came out and she understood that but it's going to be a process for her to make whatever decisions she needs to make but understand that you're gonna have to make a sacrifice and you sacrifice one thing to have the other because obviously like in her situation she can't have both I want both, though. I'm greedy. Yeah, I heard that, too. She said the same thing. <laughs> you can have both and you can make you can make both work. But when it starts catching up to you, then that's a that's the decision you make that do you want to keep both or do you want do you want to let go of one and keep one? That's the that's the caveat there. How much people can actually give up one for another? Like if you knew, if I knew right now, let's say, I give my personal example, that if I put, let's say, 50% more in life coaching business, like, right, and 50% personal training, right? Obviously, I'm going to lose some money because I've been less work in personal training. But if I knew I was going to get, let's say, for instance, you knew you were going to get so much out of it, would you put it into work? Yes. Like if you knew, if I put, if I knew right now, if I put in 50% more time into my life coaching business and I would make a million bucks, do you think I would do that? Yeah. Why not? Right. So if we go back to your friend's example, they're just really in a comfort zone. They're unwilling to make a change or an effort to something that will obviously feel uncomfortable because when you transition do something new no difference than we start a new job or you get into a relationship some things may feel uncomfortable in the very beginning but you don't quit that job until you pass the 90-day probation you go in there will say okay i have 90 days six months i'm gonna put my effort in 100 percent, and if i you know become full-time or i get the benefits or whatever the case may be that's what you do and that's what the comfort uncom- getting out of your comfort zone that's what happens it feels uneasy it feels brand new you just don't know what to do how to navigate it but we all have a very good, keen sense of how to navigate everything, but we're unwilling to take that first step. That makes a difference. That that first step to do something new makes the difference. Mm-hmm. It, it does. <clears throat> and sometimes too, um, this was um, this came up on another conversation with my um, another girlfriend about you know taking that first step. Since you brought it up, um, taking that first step to. Maybe for her would be the next chapter or something that would be better for her. But she's having a hard time taking that first step. And we know that when you're having a hard time, you're not ready. Your your mind is telling you you need to and you should take that step forward. But you're not quite ready. You're not quite there yet. And we got into the conversation about accepting reality, you know, and we just went back and forth about reality, reality. And we got to the end by saying that reality to her, what reality to her might be different from my own reality. So whatever that reality for her is, that's hers. And I might not, I may not understand what that reality is for her, just like how, what my reality is for me. And she may not understand that also. So it was, and I'm telling you this conversation, we could not meet in the middle at all. We were like in two separate worlds. 
Um, you know why? Why? Uh, you try and make her see something she cannot see. Yeah, you know what? You're right about that. You are so right. And I think I think maybe because I see something, mm-hmm. right? And I see something there that I feel like, no, no, it's it's not that. This this is how I see it. And this is I'm not telling her that this is how it should be or this is what she should do, because at the end of the day, the decision is hers. But I see something different outside of whatever that reality is for her. And I just know that, and she did admit to this, that she's not ready. And she said, yeah, you're right. I am not ready. Okay. So then always the question is, when do you think he will be ready? She doesn't know. Right. So if you don't know, then how do you, how, how will you know you will be ready and when that time will come? She feels like she has it set, you know? Like at a certain age, she'll be ready by that time. And I don't I don't know, because sometimes when you, this is just for me, my personal opinion, when you set something like that, um, when you feel like at a certain age, you're going to be doing something and you're going to be out of whatever situation you're in, it, it's kind of hard to set that. You know, I feel like if it happens, it's just going to happen. Because what if that time comes and you're still in that same situation? The first first thing in in that conversation with your friend is you're trying to see, you see something that unwilling I do not see. And that right there causes suffering for both parties, not just for you. Because you're trying to have someone see the potential they cannot see. Until they're willing to see potential or wouldn't know they can, they will. And that's why for you, you got very frustrated. It's going round and round in circles because they, they don't see it. And then obviously now at the time, oh, I got to set time. I know what I'm doing. Okay. If you knew what you're doing, you would already be there. Mm-hmm. Obviously you don't because you're not there. Well, but you know what, uh, Gloria, I know that, you know, I know this day and time. How do you know, how can you predict every second of the day? If the time is, let's say, 10 years from now, how do you know what's going to happen every second of the day 10 years from now? Do you know that? They probably, probably, no, they probably say, no, I don't know that. Okay, so if you don't can't predict every second, every minute, every day, 10 years from now, whichever number that equates to probably millions of times and hours or whatever. Okay, so if you can't see it, then what can you see in this moment? They probably say, well, I, I just don't know. Because when you challenge them, the inheritance or sorry, the default is to protect themselves because not real, they're not ready to accept what is or what is not. And they're unfulfilled and probably fearful and scared because it's like, man, I keep doing this to myself. So the best thing to do is just avoid the conversation, avoid those challenging questions because they're not just not ready for that. Nope. Not at all. That's that's stuff for you guys out there listening that, you know, we're always trying to tell people what to do. Okay. And that's doesn't work for anybody. So if you are in a situation where you have a friend, family member, loved one, whatever, and they just don't see their potential, the worst thing you can do is force them to see your potential. Right. You know, you should be seeing things this way. This is the way to do it. Well, there is no way to do anything in this world. And has been proven throughout history, throughout everything in the world. There's no way. I mean, antibiotics is found just by accident. Okay, so if that was found by accident, countless things are just found by accident, right? So for you out there that are, you're in a situation where you're struggling for someone to feel better, especially, you know, the um, easy one for me is, you have a friend, you know, that, that's in a relationship that's horrible for them or a marriage, whatever. And they keep saying, I'm, I'm going to leave this situation. I'm going to do something about it. Um, and you're getting very frustrated because probably you're sick and tired of hearing it. That's first. It, the thing is, to make it less suffering is a step you're or detach yourself from there, um, from them. Like detach, like don't stop being their friend, but detach wanting them to have a better outcome. Okay. I'll give, I, I like give an example. I'll give you one. So when I was married, um, my ex, she was in a very abusive relationship, okay? I mean, abusive verbally and mental. And um, 
she had four kids by this guy and uh, couldn't leave. I, 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 I would never understand why. Uh, I don't understand how. I just know she couldn't leave. And I would always ask her, I said, well, you know, he verbally abuses you and mentally abuses you. You know, how come your family doesn't help? Because usually family members come they rally together to help somebody else out. You know, the only difference in a drug addict, you help them out, rally again, make sure he goes to get rehab. But even though it's not a drug situation or a person that's addicted to drugs, this is still obviously a drug because you can't let go. So in the situation, I said, look, you know what, you know, I, I made the mistake. She was with the guy. We started dating. I fell in love with her. I wanted her so bad. So I, I promised her the promised land, you know, whatever that is at that time. And I want her to see what I saw. I want her to see, hey, guess what? If we move from San Diego, San Marcos to San Jose, we're going to better life. You know, this, this, this. I outlined the fact that She's going to have, he won't be there to bother her. She's going to find a job. We'll work together. We'll love each other. All these wonderful things. This would really happen. She didn't see that. And I, being 20 years old, was naive to say that, naive to know that they can't see what I see. Because I can only see what I can see and what I believe. So she ends going back to him because that's what she knows. Now, maybe it was... I'm going to take the kids away from you. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. No one can take anything away from you. You will not allow them to take away from you. Okay. So if you're worried about, well, what about my kids? No one can take the kids away from them. You, because remember the, the love you give your kids, no one can ever take that away. Well, it's going to be hard to struggle financially. Let's say you're in a situation where you are supported by your husband or your, or your wife. Great. But what's worth your freedom? I mean, how much is your freedom worth? I'll never forget the movie I saw, Braveheart. And at the very end, he says, give me freedom or give me death. There's no value on freedom. The value is knowing you, you the person, have more value than you know. So you got to credit yourself back for what you have as value. So back to the person that doesn't see what they see. So if you're the friend that doesn't see what the person's seeing, step back. Ask those empowering questions. Detach yourself. From knowing they, from knowing, so detach yourself for wanting them to, for wanting them to have better for themselves. Because some people just don't want better for themselves. They like their situation. Or, I know way he takes care of the kids, or she's a good wife, or whatever the case may be. Yeah, step back. Detachment for the outcome. Detachment from the outcome is what I'm trying to say. Mm hmm. And that's what I've, Work, that's what I worked on actually last week, detachment from the outcome. Remember when I told you that I did that mm -hmm. deep meditation? Yeah. Detachment from the outcome. Life is forever transitory. And I've said this so many times in the podcast, it's just not determined. And life's but a what's shuffle. Determined? Yeah. It's just like that. Like what is, the only thing that's determined is what I do the next step. But after this podcast, what I'm going to do, that's determined. But life is not determined. Things change all the time. And that brings me to that. You read that book. I saw your post today about uh, a certainty. So you must have read that book. Yes, I love that book. <laughs> yep, I did too, and I picked it up. It's, what's, it's for, what's for certain is life is uncertain. <laughs> so embrace the moment. It just, you know what? Um, reading something like that, even if we know already, it's just sometimes it's a good reminder or it just makes better sense for us. Like we know life is full of surprises. We know that some things are just uncertain, right? And there's things that we, that is just out of our control, you know, and things like for me, I know I'm guilty with this. Sometimes I have, you know, I have expectations and when my expectations are not met, I feel a certain way, Right. You know, and then there's sometimes some things that we want to happen doesn't happen. And there are things that happens unexpectedly. Mm -hmm. So that's that's just what life is about. It's uncertain and full of surprises. That's uh, how I'd like to see it now. And I think, you know, that as I get older, as I age, not that. I'm feeling like such a an old, old lady, but, you know, they say the older you get, the wiser you get. A lot of things are just making a lot more sense to me. You know what, the contrary to that, I would say the older I get, the more I know how to release myself from attachments. 
and that too. I think, you know, we talked about this too one time, and I was talking to, I was talking about this with one of my best friends too. Is that where was all this stuff when we were younger, right? Because like our parents didn't, we didn't learn any a lot of this from our parents. We didn't learn a lot of this from school. You know what? I would say we live in a great time where abundance of everything, technology, abundance of information is at our fingertips. I mean, the only time you ever got information was what you read in the newspaper, what you saw in the news, what your parents told you, what your friends told you, and what you got at the library. That was it. That's all the way you got information. Okay. Now you got the Kindle. I can download. I can listen to Audible. I can research something. I can listen to the news. I can go on social media. Anything I want, I can research it. And that's, you know, what we have at our fingertips. Our parents didn't have that. So their scope or what they knew was extremely limited. They didn't have access to the internet. It was what environment they lived in, who they hung around with, and what they were able to find. And if you went to a school that wasn't the best school or, you know, wasn't the best neighborhood, your information is limited because you're not exposed to more. So being exposed um, for my parents maybe was limited, so they didn't know about all this stuff. Mm-hmm. Plus, at least for me, um, as I, you guys know, I have a group of Joe's Witness. This stuff, conscious work, is not something that's ever discussed or aware of. It just doesn't happen that way. Why? I'm not for sure. Um, but, you know, I believe in prayer and the thought process being anything is read the Bible and pray. But you read the Bible and pray, you still have to do the work. That's, I, I can pray, but God will say, do some work too. <laughs> it's not, you can pray for something, you can pray for it, but you can't sit there and wait for your prayers to be answered. Well, not just that, we're expecting, oh, I pray for this, it's going to show up my doorstep in a yeah. nice red bow or something. No, <laughs> you still got to put in the work to get what you want. Yes, God will help you. Yes, God is in us and around us at the same time. He's in us right now and around us, but we have to put in the work. God's not going to work. Hey, you know what? You can sit down and, and sit there and just ask for things to happen. That, that doesn't happen in life. And that's why I say another thing. Those who are out there that are very religious, forgive me, but, you know, um, there should religion and spirituality are two different things. And I wish they talked about the difference in there rather than just say, this is the way. Because there is a lot of different ways out there in life. And either, either one can be proven right or wrong. It's a spirituality is the only thing that obviously is universal. But back to where I grew up in this, I didn't understand the conscious work. I, I didn't understand self-esteem. I didn't understand self-confidence. I didn't understand how to, what, what does it want? If I want something, what is it telling me? You know, most people say, if you want something, it's act of the devil. <laughs> what the hell does that mean? It doesn't mean anything. It doesn't help me. Okay, so... What you need to do is ask, you know, um, you know, wh- why do I want this? How would it help me? Would it help other people around me? And that's what they just don't talk about. And that's why I said it didn't play part in my parents because they definitely very religious. They believe in God, Jesus Christ, and so do I. But they didn't, they didn't have this conscious work available for them. It just wasn't there. Yeah, and and everyone has, you know, everyone has different beliefs. So our parents grew up in a different time different era you know like what you said they didn't have all this and 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 what just came up to me right now is speaking of how um they grew up differently from us and they have different beliefs is like do you remember okay so yesterday um the sky was different right Mm -hmm. it was it was orange all over the bay area and the sun never even came out and if it did it was just it was like bloody orange and it was funny. So I was, you know, texting with my friends because I had a, I had a little bit of a, I don't know what I would say. This is not, a, it's not an incident, but something, something kind of happened to me a little bit where I felt like I needed to knock my head, knock myself in the head to wake me up. So I was at school. I was in the building for the first half of the day. I know when I, came, when I went to work that morning, it was already weird. It was, you know, everything was just orange, Right go into the building and around lunchtime I was coming out to get something in my car and I looked and I said oh my god nobody's here it was so empty and it's still it's gloomy outside it's dark um I still don't see the sun the sky looks orange and it just it just looks really weird 
So I looked around and all the, the whole building looks really empty. So I'm thinking, well, okay, everyone probably left for lunch. I felt like nobody was there but me. And then I went outside and there's nobody around. There's no cars coming by. It's just, it's just streets just look really empty. And then I see, I see a man across the street walking. Long white hair. And he's walking like you can tell when, you know, he's, I, I don't, I don't mean to make fun of anybody at all, but I could tell he's, you know, he's disabled, right? But it's just the way he was walking. The first thing I thought of is, you know, that show, The Fear of the Walking Dead. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so I stood in the middle. I was like, oh, what the heck is happening? And that's all I could think of. I, I, I swear and I kid you not for a second, I felt like I was out somewhere. I was out in a different world. And, and I just like I had to close my eyes and open my eyes and kind of bring myself back to reality because I kind of freaked out for a little bit. I was scared. I was like, what is going on here? And then that's what I thought of the fear of the walking dead. And I, I remember texting this to my friends. And one of my best friends says, well, her parents says they feel like it's the second coming. And then and then we talked to another one. And then um I remember telling my mom about it. I told my mom the story and she was laughing at me. She said, yeah, I was kind of scared for a little bit. I was like, what's going on? She said she didn't want to step outside. And then she talked to her friend and her friend said, I felt like Jesus is mad at us. And this is what's happening. You know, so we we just it was just funny because I did have this conversation with my mom and she said, well, you know how we are old folks, you know, we have different beliefs and it's, we believe in a lot of stuff like that and superstitious, you know? So she said, I, she said she had to even bring herself back into reality also. Interesting. Isn't that very interesting? <laughs> yeah, but I just, <laughs> I still, I was laughing at myself the whole day because I can't believe what happened to me. I can't believe I even thought of that. And then poor old man was just walking on the other side of the street, like minding his own business. And that's the first thing I thought of. Man, (laughs) (laughs) that's pretty funny. It was, but maybe that's just too much coffee also for me. I don't know. (laughs) That too. Yeah. I thought I was going to hear those, um, you know, those old school movies in the fifties that uh, nuclear buzzer. Oh, yeah. I thought any minute that was going to happen. That's right. Like the someone... atomic bomb was about to go off or something. Yeah. And it, it really felt like that. And it wasn't even that cold either. It was, I felt like it was windy, but yet humid. And um, I just, I remember I was in the hallway. I was about to use the bathroom and somebody said apocalypse. <laughs> and I, just, <laughs> I just wanted to laugh. I, mean, I like how people are just kind of just laughing at the situation, you know, and because we we've already had gone through so much this year and mm-hmm. i love to see how people can just laugh about it and just laugh at the situation instead of taking it in and and then just kind of having and letting that affect them like mentally mhm it's an ironic yeah so that's um that's pretty much it but that was my funny story yesterday i just i I just still, (laughs) um, even right now, I'm thinking about it. I can't believe that happened to me. Like, it was just so weird. That's pretty funny, actually. (laughs) So, that's that's, that's different. Mm -hmm. All right, guys. It's it's Freestyle Thursday. Thanks for listening to another episode of Life's a Shuffle. I hope we learned something new. Um, Obviously, for Gloria and I, this is a good way for us to catch up on the week because weeks can go by so fast and um, so many things can happen all at once. So thank you for becoming a downloader or downloading ver- different versions or variations of the podcast. We appreciate you guys' help. And thank you for listening to another episode of Life's Shovel. This is your Ron Johnson, life coach, leadership coach, motivational speaker, and health coach. Yes. Um, again, thank you for um, supporting us and downloading and listening to us. We're happy to hear Um, from a lot of you that you are enjoying listening to our podcast and our stories and our freestyle Thursdays, of course. Um, Again, thank you for all your support. And this is Gloria, your life coach. 